What's going on family? We are back at it again with another episode of Fact Friday. And this is a new series that I'm starting. Every Friday, I'm gonna be answering your guys' questions. So to be featured in a future episode, all you have to do is comment in the comment section below, hashtag AskPattyLifts, and your question could be future, featured in a future episode. So um, we are here today in my bedroom because the first topic today is on sleep. So the first question of the day is by G-O space LD and it's how many hours do you sleep per day and how many do you recommend? So personally, I'm not the best example of this, but I personally sleep four to six hours a night. Um, I do have severe sleep apnea, so I sleep with a CPAP machine and it does sort of clear everything up, um, but I personally need to improve that. Um, with that said, um, poor sleep is pretty common among Canadians. Uh, about one in three Canadians actually uh, do not get enough sleep for optimal physical and mental performance. When it comes to sleep, there are a couple details that we do want to look at in a little bit more depth. And the first one is how much sleep do you need? So according to research, there's a different amount of sleep required for different age ranges, which I'll throw up here. Um, with that said, um, that is an average and you're going to have to play around with that number to see what works a little bit better for you. So sometimes I find personally, if I sleep too much, I get a little bit groggy, lethargic throughout the day. And then of course, if I sleep too little, I'm going to be tired all the time. So in general, uh, the recommended amount of sleep I'm assuming is going to be seven to nine hours depending on your age. So now that we know how much sleep is required, we want to know why that much sleep is important. So connecting this to fitness and health, um, we want to make sure we're sleeping enough because we want to recover. Sleep is directly correlated to fat loss. So throughout a 24 hour period, you actually lose the most amount of fat when you are sleeping. Second of all, if you're looking to build muscle, when you're in the gym and you're tearing your muscles down, this is not when you're making progress. It's when you eat and then when you recover. And when you're actually recovering is when the muscles is gonna recover, get bigger, and uh, depending on other things that you're training like strength, you're able to make those adaptations. Um, you wanna make sure that you are performing the best in the gym and sleep will also um, help with your mind as well. So how you're feeling mentally, can you think straight? And a lot of these things take focus and affect how you actually do in the gym, how you recover, along with many other factors, such as high blood pressure, accidents, trouble with thinking, concentration, risk of heart disease, poor balance, and the list goes on. So you can see why sleep is important and I'd actually put it up and take it as important as training and nutrition because you need it to recover. And for the second question, we're here in the gym and it's by Jasper Van Denberg. Great video again. I have one question. I hope you give me some insight. I just finished my first cut and started bulking. However, my bench only seems to be getting weaker. Do you have any idea how this could be possible? I bench once every five days only and my bench be getting weaker since the end of my cut. So this is pretty normal when you are uh, finishing a cut that you do lose strength and you lose size, but don't worry, it'll come back very fast. I would say the main thing that I do see within this question is that you only bench once a week. To get stronger, you want to increase your frequency where the research shows that bench pressing even four to five times per week will be a lot stronger than doing it once per week. Although there is conflicting evidence on both sides, um, as a coach and as an athlete myself, um, powerlifting, I've seen myself that a higher frequency does help. Um, with that said, we do want to follow progressive overload principles and we, want, and we want to ensure that we are matching volume, if not get more volume from the higher frequencies. And looking further into the research, it is really important that we do follow, first of all, the frequency, um, trying to gain more volume through progressive overload 
And um, I personally feel that when you are able to work out a movement specifically more frequently, you get to practice that movement as well. Since lifting is a skill, you can have good and bad form, just like in other sports like a slap shot or a, a jump shot. With that said, um, there's other ways to increase your volume to allow you to actually push more weight in the gym. And one of the biggest things that I see personally, especially as a coach in the field, I say longer rest times. So even if you rest two minutes, your central nervous system and your nervous system isn't ready to activate your muscles and fully recruit um, everything that you have to push uh, the weight up. So if you wait that extra two minutes, even if you are feeling good, so a total of four minutes, you generally will be able to push more weight and more volume over time. Um, with that said, when you're equating volume, lastly, um, you can't just do three sets of 20 or three sets of 50 reps to get more volume over time. There are specific rep ranges, and I personally recommend between uh, two and seven reps generally when you're going for strength, below five for the most part, but there are specific reps rep and set schemes that um, can be uh, explained further depth in a future video. But uh, make sure you are following these principles overall and over time your strength will go up. So to summarize everything that we went over, we want to have a higher frequency to hopefully increase volume, practice the movement more often. We want to increase your rest time in between sets and uh, follow um, reps between um, two and seven, uh, generally below five to get stronger over time. Um, with this said, I do want to uh, put out a disclaimer. The research that I have done um, is very generalized. You want to apply it to yourself to see how it affects you and then make adjustments from there. So it's a great starting point. And of course, there's other conflicting uh, research that is out there. And if you do have another view on this, I would love to go over it in the comments below as I would retouch on the subject as I'm always trying to keep up with the most up-to-date research. So um, I really appreciate you guys. If you like this style of video, um, please let me know in the comments below. Currently working with Danny Gets Fit. So I want to thank him and we're going to be doing this this series on and on. So to be featured for the last time, I want to ask you guys to ask me questions. I want to provide direct value towards you guys. Um, so thank you very much. And I'll see you guys next week in the next episode of Fat Friday.